Uluwatu Selunguhe. I'm a lawyer and I specialize in international human rights law. I graduated from the 1995 set of Command Secondary School. I was in GSS 1 to 3 Marble in Command Secondary School, Joss. And I was in the arts class in my senior secondary school. I was also in Blue House, which is also known as Flying Horse House then. And it was a wonderful time that I had in the school. I graduated with five A's and three C's. And I also did well in my JAM and GCE exams. In 2002, I graduated from the University of Ibadan with honors and I got my bachelor's in law. I had a brief stint with as a paralegal in a legal in a law firm in Lagos. In 2005, I was called to the Nigerian bar as a barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, which meant I be officially became a lawyer which could practice law in any part of Nigeria. After I was called to the Nigerian bar, I went on for my youth service. I served in a law firm in Lagos and after my um, youth service, I went to the Gambia, which is in West Africa. I became an intern with the African Commission on Human and People's Rights, which is the African Union organ with the mandate to promote, protect, and interpret the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. And I was there for a year as an intern, after which I became a legal officer for protection. I worked on several human rights cases while I was there, human rights cases involving Africans and member states of the African Union. I decided in 2009 that I should go for a master's degree in international human rights law because my interest in human rights was um, was was um, woken was awoken and I decided that I needed to know more about human rights law so I got a full scholarship in the University of Notre Dame in Indiana in the United States of America where I graduated in 2010 with honors as well and got a master's um, degree in international human rights law. Then in 2012, I started working with um, the National Human Rights Commission, which is the Nigerian institution for the promotion and protection of human rights in Nigeria. So I worked in the National Human Rights Commission for eight years. After eight years, I decided that I wanted to broaden my horizon again and then I put in my application to the African Court on Human and People's Rights in Arusha, Tanzania. I worked as a legal officer for, for in the courts and I was able to be, to be involved in, in writing and assisting judges in writing their judgments and in doing a lot of research and I took my office in 2021 January and I've been working since then with the ECOWAS Court of Justice as a um, senior research and legal affairs officer. The significance of my job is that I'm able to touch people's lives in my own little way. I'm able to be exposed to a lot of human rights issues. I'm able to influence um, the decisions of the courts. Also, being able to learn a lot about what human rights entails, how to touch people's lives, and how to um, make a difference in not only Nigeria, but in Africa as a whole, and even in the world. Because whatever we do in our little corner makes a whole lot of difference in other parts of the world. My advice to all of you, dear students, is for you to be focused to be diligent, to be hardworking, and to put your trust in yourself and also on God. Believing in God and trusting that he can move you to any, um, to any height that you wish to go to and you can do more than you think. I wish you all the best and I hope to see you out there someday.
Thank you for listening. Command as in JSS1 to JSS3 silver and SS1 to SS3 emerald. Emerald used to be considered a science class back in the day, and so I was a science student. So when I graduated, my SSC results on my YEC from Command were three Fs in maths, physics, and chemistry, and five Cs, and I had two Ps. I think my one of my Ps was in agricultural. I think my fifth. C was in uh, fine arts and so that's my results very difficult not a very promising start out of command so i went through three ume jams one poly jam one nda exam so a very rough time and if this is you you know let me encourage you it will come to an end but uh, persevere you know i can tell you for for a fact that in between looking for those exams you come through a lot of corruption you know an example in those external GCSEs, you find you, some of your invigilators will be asking you for a bribe. Some of the students will be bringing in exam papers and if you have a conscience, yeah, you'll be in a very challenged place. I, I certainly was eventually gaining admission to the University of Adoikiti. So this is another example or another advice for anybody out there. In case you're struggling, um, there is something called a catchment area. It might be from Anambra. And so the Anambra University might lower their catchment or their, their, their jam score so that indigents from Anambra who live in Lagos and Abuja can come back home and hopefully gain, gain admission, complete their studies and go into working for the, for the um, public service in Anambra. So that's what happened to me. I went to Ekiti, the Ekiti State University or University of Adu Ekiti had lowered its UME JAM score. After three years at the University of Adu Ekiti, I was very fortunate. I was offered the opportunity to study abroad by my parents. And so I left, I left Adu Ekiti and went to the United Kingdom to study computer science at the Middlesex University. I was very present um, with my um, experiences in Nigeria and the failure I'd experienced earlier and I finished with a second class upper. Um, I gained scholarships for academic and for sporting achievements at Middlesex University for which I'm very grateful. So maybe encouragement to say yeah even though you might start rough or you might start very very poorly I think that just helps us learn what to look out for and what not to repeat. And so I've also you know, scored a lot of success working with companies like IBM, Microsoft, PricewaterhouseCoopers, you know, a lot of great teams. And so life can turn out well, but um, please um, brace yourself um, for whatever is coming and encourage yourself that you can get through it. Before you get into an institution, you know, I'd also encourage you, if you're looking for resources, there's three I'm going to mention now. One of them is called, you know, it's the URL, freecodecamp.com. You probably know it. Another one is codecademy.com. And then um, one is W3C Schools. So please Google them. Another resource, which is immense, is that the Harvard University is offering a free course in computer science. It's an 11 week course and it's free. All you need is your mobile device and an internet connection. There are usually three tiers um, described when you're trying to build an application. So there's a front end, there's a middleware or application side, and then the back end. So this is the backbone of every company around the world. You know, give you a front end to enter your details like Google, your email, the front end, the middleware to process that data, and then the back end to store the data and retrieve it from anywhere around the world. So it will always be relevant. Finally, I want to advise you and encourage you, you know, that finishing from CSSJ, I think your, your most immense res resource are your colleagues, the guys and girls that you've graduated with. And so, you know, when you're having a tough time, don't be ashamed of showing what you're going through because somebody else might be able to put you through it. And if you don't tell them how dire or distressed you are, they might think, hey, Maybe that's what you want. So I, for me, I think you're naked already. 
And that's one of the things that I always do to open myself up and learn from other people. Congratulations, class of 2022. Kenge Peter Olofimoy, a graduate of the class of 1995, saying thank you for giving me the time and the audience to speak to you. Hi, Command Secondary School Jobs, class of 2022. My name is Hannah Onogue. I'm a writer. First of all, congratulations on your graduation. I was once um, in Command Secondary School just like you. I finished in 1995. Um, GS 1 to 3, I was in gold. SS 1 to 3, I was in diamond. And I was in Tiger House all the way. So I went to the sciences, but I wasn't too great with sciences. Um, physics, chemistry, mathematics, I got a P, which is that close to an F, so <laughs> even though it was a pass. Um, I did GC later, um, the year after um, leaving command, and I was able to make a C credit in chemistry, because I studied that thing like no man's business. And I, initially, I wanted to go for economics, because everyone said, you know, it's lucrative and all that, but my real interest lay in psychology. Then I started writing in primary school, off and on. Even in command, I would write a few stories, pass the books around to my friends who were always eager to see how it would end. My first job was in English. I was teaching out of NYC. I went to a friend's school. She took me in. The, the pay was terrible. I will even tell you how much it was. But it gave me some experience with English, teaching English, and then, you know, whatever experience you have, it helps you. I got another job with a um, software company, um, which is where I still am. Right now, I have um, a contract with an American university, Arizona State University, for a fellowship, which I'm doing from here in Nigeria. Of course, is to produce fiction and original works of original works of fiction, and you get paid for it. So the idea for writing is not just to pursue. Oh, it's great to have a passion and say you are doing it for the culture or something, but you should also do something you love and hope to get paid for it. There are different kinds of writing you can do. You can do copywriting for companies um, where you produce content, you know, that others will read and get their message across. You can be a ghostwriter which is you write for people, especially biographies, maybe for celebrities or politicians. And if you don't mind other, another person getting the credit for your writing, that would be perfect because your name probably won't be on the book, but you'll get paid for it. You can be a journalist and that is another type of writing. And for that, you also need probably some background in mass communications. But with all of this, English is important, the use of grammar, use of language, and reading is very important. You can't write without being a good reader. You have to know the rules of writing before you can break them. You can break them to get a point across, to make a good story. And these are some of the ways um, you can do it. Like I said, if you have, you can do be a journalist, you can be a social media writer. There are some companies who need um, an employee just to deal with social media posts and all of that. So that is important. So for schools that do creative writing in Nigeria, University of Ibadan, University of Lagos, and I think um, University of Nigeria and Suka, if you're going into journalism or any sort of thing like that, Covenant University is a great choice. Um, American University of Nigeria and Adamawa is another great choice. University of Lagos, University of Benin, University of Ilori, these are all great choices for mass communication. Creative writing schools abroad, we have Northwestern University, Illinois, Columbia University, New York, University of Iowa is really famous for its writing program. Option, Emory University in Georgia, we have University of London. And these are all, you know, choices, options you can explore as you leave school and decide on the next steps to take in for career-wise. So for scholarships, you have a couple of resources. You have greatcollegedeals.net. You can go there and check it out. Blog.prepscholar. 
www.scholarshipads.com, scholarshipads.com, topuniversities.com. These are a few of the websites you can go to check out scholarships for creative writing and probably for a whole lot of other courses as well. So um, just to wish you well, you know, as you take your next steps um, going forward from Command Secondary School jobs. Just, and I pray um, you, you get clarity as to what to do next. Thank you. Good afternoon, this. Good. Uh, hello, youth. My name is Kevin Obia. I'm a charter purchaser by profession. I finished from Command Secondary School Jaws 1995 set. And while I was there during my junior days, I was in GSS 1 to GSS 3 Mabu. Up Mabu! <laughs> and uh, during my uh, senior secondary school days, I was in SS 1 to SS 3 Diamond. Diamond up you, and that was a science class, of course. And uh, I was in Dragon House. When I rounded off from CSSJ, wrote my work, the result was not good. I don't want to say I failed because failure is not final. Uh, I had two C's, three P's, and three beautiful F's. Don't mind my F's because I said failure is not final, so I had to rewrite the exam the following year. and good enough. I had two A's, I had four credits, and that result has helped me to where I am till today. Um, when I rounded off, I had to write um, JAM, it used to be called Uni JAM that time, which you call UTME today. I wrote JAM six times. I was jammed. But you know, like I said, failure is never final. And success does not have ending. So uh, my initial plan was to study uh, mechanical engineering from Uniben. Uh, when that didn't work, I had to uh, go to a polytechnic where I studied mechanical engineering. I actually went to Federal Polytechnic at Ekiti in Ekiti State. Uh, I graduated with upper credit in my OND, upper credit in my HND, and uh, my specialization was in production engineering. And uh, I spent five years all together, that is with the industrial training. Today, I can confidently say I am a PPP, proud polytechnic product. When I left the Polytechnic, rounded off from the Polytechnic, I had to do some professional courses in safety and then I got my first job. It was a teaching job. I taught mathematics and technical drawing and then, and then after a few months, I got a job in a cable manufacturing company. Uh, I was a sales engineer for a few years. I actually applied to be a production engineer because that was my specialization. But I was employed as a sales engineer. After a few years, I was able to move to another department because I was moved to another department, which is the purchasing department. I've been able to build a career in purchasing because I've been there now for 11 years. I'm now a full chartered member of the Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supply, and I also have other qualifications. The mechanical engineers will collaborate with other engineers to build roads, build dams, bridges, power plants, power grids. And um, for as a purchaser today, a chartered purchaser, I, I ensure that raw materials are bought for the company. And of course, these raw materials are used to produce goods that will meet customer specification and also regulatory requirements. I ensure that I buy to specification, right specification, right quality of material, right quantity of material, at the right price, at the right time, from the right source and delivered to the right location. If you want to study mechanical engineering, I would recommend 
Emmy Federal University of Technology. Futa, that's in Akure. Futo, that's in Oweri. There's Foot Mina in Niger State. Any of these, and any federal university also, even the private universities that have good engineering background, can also be uh, a good option. Then, if you want to study mechanical engineering in a polytechnic, Federal Polytechnic at Ekiti, Yaba College of Technology, as they usually call it, Yaba Tech. Then we have Kaduna State Poly. I know these three, have, they have very strong stand in engineering. I recommend that. And for opportunities, please be your best so that you can get the best. See you at the top. Thank you. It's Hakim Badmos. Um, <clears throat> I finished from Command Secondary School just in 1995. So I'm a member of the 95 set. Um, I was in GSS 1 to 3 marble and SS 1 to 3 gold, which was uh, a science class. I'm a medical doctor. I'm an orthopedic and a spine surgeon. I fix bones, fractures. I replace knees um, that are degenerated and worn out. I replace hips that are also fractured and degenerated and I fix problems that are associated with the spine. I stayed in the Den Dragon House, wrote Wayek. I had seven A's and two C's. I think the two C's were Yoruba and one other subject and then wrote Jamb and I wanted to study medicine but that was what was in my mind then so I filled the, the forms for Obafemi Malone University Ileife for um, medicine and dentistry. I did first choice medicine, second choice dentistry because I just wanted to go to, to that school, Ife. Um, number one, I'd heard a lot about the school, that it was one of the best schools in Nigeria. Then I heard how beautiful the school was and how excellent they were and then I had people that were also schooling there. So I just wanted to go to Ife then. And um, I scored 256 then in JAMB and I was able to make it in the um, second list of students for admission. So there was no delays in getting into the university. I never had a problem academically. Finished medical school in 2005. So that was nine years in school. We used to say that we were the oldest medical students in the world. I made good friends while I was in school, so I had a friend whose um, mom uh, was in a hospital in the United Kingdom, South Warwickshire General Hospital, and so I applied for a, um, an observership at the hospital then, and I was invited. So immediately after my university, before I even started my house job and NYC, I went to the United Kingdom and I did um, a little bit of observership in orthopedics there and that opened my eyes and kind of like opened my mind to the practice that I wanted. Came back and did my NYC house job in JOS, NYC in Kuba Cantonment and then I spent six months at Federal Medical Center in Gombe and then wrote my exams for residency training in orthopedics. I got employed in Obafemi Malone University Teaching Hospital. Finished my um, training um, 2014 and immediately left Ife for Abuja and started working in a private um, hospital, one of the leading private hospitals in Abuja, which handles trauma and surgeries. Um, and then within a short time, I was sent to Lagos to come and to head the the hospital in Lagos and that's where my management um, of hospitals started and you know I ran the business for about three years it grew and then I went and started another hospital with some colleagues from the United States and then during all this period I was traveling abroad every year for a fellowship training and that was how I built my practice in spine it's a fulfilling career it's a fulfilling lifestyle. Nigeria has a young working class population and we have 
lots of accidents that um, take place every day. And then we're also starting to have a, a gradual increase in the um, population of our elderly people too. So a lot of people come in with with knee pains, with back pains, with hip pains and all that. So that underscores the importance of orthopedic surgery in um, Nigeria today. And spine is also one aspect that is very delicate. About 70% of people will have back pain. And so, you know, not having a spine surgeon to take care of people is a disservice to the country. And so I chose to do orthopedics and spine because there's high shortage of it in the country, of specialists in the country, and there are too many people that have these problems and they need this help.